This morning it is Thursday the 29th of August and I've de designated today a hike day although the weather's looking odd so we'll see what it's like when we get there we should be all right hopefully it's not supposed to rain um, I'm not recording the outbound journey today because it's a route done before we're going back to the locality of the Wessendale head the Wessenden head car park We're parking a little bit short of that and we're going to take the Pennine Trail from that point south instead of north because when I did the north one that's when we went to the, the, Western, the Westenden Head Reservoirs. We're not doing that today. We are going south and heading towards Ladau Rocks. I think there were a couple of points along the way. I think there's something called Black Rock Point or something like that. I'll have a look. Um, we'll know when we get there. <laughs> so I'm parking up there today. And this is the last hike I have planned, which is on the Pennine Trail, so to speak, for now. The weather's not been good. I'm running out of days. I have three or four other walks planned, but they're not right up on the moors because I think we're going to start to struggle with the weather. And today's weather is not looking as good as the map suggests. looks like it's going to tip down but it's supposed to be sunny so it can it can change so suddenly anyway so it's a half hour drive and we're parking up on a designated lay-by by that section of the trail Ah, something I meant to say. My waterproof poncho has arrived. Little video there, hopefully somewhere, of me trying it on. I think it's pretty good. I think for what I need, it'll do the job. It's only there as an emergency measure. I don't have any plans, really, to hike in wet weather. But it's pretty good. It's got a hood with a peak on it, which is handy. And it buttons all the way down the sides with poppers so you can have the arms as wide as you want um, and you can undo the poppers so that if you've got a big backpack on um, it'll cover the backpack and it's designed to go over the top of backpacks and everything so if I do run into problems with weather I now have that permanently installed in my rucksack which will be good it feels really thin but it's light and that's what you want because I don't want a big, heavy, warm coat because I get really, really hot really quickly when I'm out on these walks. I'd rather have lots of light layers and I can take stuff off when I suddenly get too hot, put it back on when I suddenly get too cold. And that very light, uh, waterproof layer will not make the problem worse, particularly as, because it's open, because it's a poncho, it's going to have a lot more air going through it so I'm not going to get all hot and sweaty. I didn't want a big waterproof winter coat. Um, yeah, I, I just want it. I like to keep my layers light and numerous and then I can take things on and off because this is a problem I have all the time. It's constantly cold, constantly hot, things going on and off, on and off, on and off all the blooming time. It drives me mad. So that was a good little buy, it didn't cost very much, I think I paid about 13, 14 pounds for it. Um, and I may never end up using it, we'll see how we get on. So, 
do the drive and I'll see you at the other end. Okay, I've arrived. That journey looked not good. <laughs> it looks very misty. I can show you my route from here. So let me just turn you around. So I'm parked up here on a lay-by and I don't know if you can see out the window my route is out there and across there I feel like giving this a go but I haven't been outside yet and it is windy um, I'm going to go and assess the situation and have a look. <sighs> Definitely not warm weather. I'm going to take a chance though. Let's, uh, just need to negotiate this road. That's where we're going, there. Right. There's us. This cute little goat. So, this doesn't look ideal, 
the valley looks brighter and the weather is supposed to improve. So it's not raining. It's a bit windy, but it's not horrific. A uh, bit of a sideways wind. Quite misty. I would really like to hike in fog, like proper fog. I think that would be rather good fun. I love the atmospherics of fog. Ooh, look at this. This is a fun little walkway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a go and if we get to a point where it just doesn't feel right I'll just turn around and come back. It's a pretty straight route. It seems quite easy to follow. I think it's going to be a well marked route so I can always go and do a few miles out and then turn around and come back. That's still going to give me like a five or six mile hike and I just needed to get out today and do something even if I only end up doing a couple of miles each way. This feels like proper moorland here. Back on that main road, there's a whole bunch of um, wide laybys for parking for these routes. Little remains of walls. And the pipits are annoyed at me. I wish I bought a hat today. I've got my hoodie. <laughs> yeah, put that up, that helps. <laughs> as long as it doesn't rain. And I can see, and I know that the mist is rising rather than getting worse. And it's going to improve incrementally as the day goes on. I think by about four o'clock it's going to be a bit like bright sunshine and clear skies but it's only nine o'clock at the moment so you expect it to be a bit murky. And this is the problem I'm going to face now is that hikes are going to get colder and murkier and that's why I was keen to get the the Pennine Way moorland walks done when the weather was particularly good. And there's the road up there. hear a grouse. Can you hear it? I just saw it. Oh. Just seen a red grouse. They must be in this area because I don't know really if you remember if you saw my Westendon Dale, my Westendon Head hike, I startled a red grouse, but I didn't have the camera on it. He's right in front of me, down in the heather. So this must be their section of the moor, because this is the only place I've seen and heard them. Oh wow, 
This might be the males fighting for their territories. They seem very vocal. Uh, you probably didn't see them. I can see one right now. But they're probably little dots in the distance, <laughs> which you probably can't see here. I thought about bringing the binoculars, but frankly, they're too heavy, they're too big. I don't have room in my new backpack. I know that my dad has a very small travel pair, so I might see if he'll lend me those for hikes. The heather is absolutely glorious at the moment. Absolutely stunning. It's in its full glory right now, so we'll get to see plenty of that. I've seen a few cyclists out this morning and a chap cycling one of these trails. So the weather can't be that bad because I'm sure they know their stuff better than me. everywhere. <laughs> I've never seen one and I'm surrounded by them. Fantastic. This could be a very slow hike if I keep being distracted by grouse. This is Dean Clough. A clough being, I suppose, a kind of brook. So we just need to negotiate this, which apparently can be quite dodgy in wet weather, according to that sign. of that it's very foamy wasn't actually too bad. The one at Westend and Westenden head was worse.
remains of, I think it's a house up there. It looks quite big on the Google Maps view, satellite view. Down there all day looking for a, a glimpse of a grouse, unfortunately. This is a really nice walk. I wish I bought some gloves. <coughs> Hopefully, as I walk, I will get warmer because why I need to stop looking for grass and get my steps in. See the valley down there looks like quite light. All the different colours of the different things growing on the moor. So you've got your heather, you've got your grassland and your ferns and the heather makes it look really dark so our first point of call is called Black Hill and if I was going to make it all the way to my final point, I would end up at Ladow Rocks. I don't think I'm going to make that today. <clears throat> but we shall see how we get on. Now that I'm moving, it doesn't feel as cold. And it's quite hilly, so we're quite well protected here, actually. It felt worse up on the top where the road is because it's completely exposed up there. I'll try and find you an excerpt of grass calls because in case you can't hear it um, I'd like you to hear what I can hear it's rather amusing sun's trying to come through. We might get lucky. Do you see my car in the distance? I shan't be hot and sweaty today. That is a definite advantage to hiking in cold weather. Gosh, this looks steep. This looks like another clough. 
Easy down here. Good heavens, look at that. I'll have to put the uh, I'll have to put the camera down and negotiate this properly. I'm not a height person, and this <laughs> feels a little bit high, like hiking a mountain. fun coming back along and of course I've got to get up the other side although it looks easier to walk if steep Really pretty. Look at that. Imagine this can get quite deep in winter. The flies have expired. Into the season for the midges. Right, there's a little bit of rain coming now. No, it's very fine. Um, right. I'm not sure which clough this is, but this I know there was another one, or whether I've misnamed the first one. I will put the information on screen as ever. Cloughs are tricky to negotiate. Look at the heather. I think these bushes here are bilberry. these green ones. You can eat bilberry, although I never have. I 
I think I've missed the season. I would imagine the grass have had the lot. Well, I definitely needed that exercise. And I'm still only that far away from the car. I can just see it in the distance. I can also see the cloud is just starting to lift. I can see some blue sky, which is good. Man, I'm so unfit, it's ridiculous. I hate being this unfit. Oh. We've reached the top. Wow. As the grass, I can hear wrens up here. Fabulous little song, and I've seen the pipits as well. I'm going to stop for a look at the map in a minute and see how far we are from our first stopping point.
almost slipped over. That was a red grouse. <laughs> Almost the only way to see them is if you accidentally startle one that's close by. trees up here. This is a little one. Looks like a hawthorn. Somewhere off to the left is a bridge called Blackpool Bridge. You can't see it from here, but it's not as grand as it sounds. It's just a little wooden bridge over a, a brook or a, a clough. <laughs> that was another route I could have walked today. Peaty water there. It's very up and down. This looked like it was going to be quite a straight route, but it's um, you're constantly going up and down because of the little the way the brooks run and have cut themselves down into the into the ground over the centuries. So there's a bit of down and there's a bit of up. Well, I needed some exercise today and I'm definitely getting it. See, that sun is still trying to come through.
Yeah, look. That blue sky is starting to come through. Hopefully, it's a good sign for the day. another trail running that way and there's a post for it. I don't know you can see there's a trail down there in the distance by the looks of it. Um, but that's not where we're going. Just gonna have a look at the map and see where we are going. So we're getting closer to our first point of call. Whether it's just a landmark or there's is that anything to see, I'm not sure. There's another box up there. What are they about then? Alright, we're heading upwards again. like a little mini flock there. I wonder if they were all females. I'm seeing more of them now. Ooh, look at that. If a sheep fell in there, it's never coming out again. dodgy. Be careful of that.
This is another caution for Dean Clough. Dean Clough River crossing difficult in very wet weather. Alternative route with the bridge crossing via Kirkley's Way. Well, that must be the Kirkley's Way then. The problem is if I go down there, I will end up so far from the car that I'll have to walk back along the main road. But Dean Clough didn't seem too bad. It was doable. And of course the weather's dry so it's not too bad. I have to say, I'm not really feeding this today. I don't know what it is. press on. We'll get to Black Hill and then we'll have a think. And I shall stop for some water because I really need a drink now. Yeah, these are bilberry bushes, look. There's a bilberry. Wow, look at this view. I can still see my car. The hill in front. <laughs> I feel ready for a snack already. It can only be about 10 o'clock. I had my sweet free coffee this morning and some cheese and a boiled egg. <sighs> oh, that sun's coming out. Look at that, a little glimpse of the golden orb. Let's get to the top of this hill, which I suspect is Black Hill.
is not good today. good at this. Cans. Oh, three cans. Little one there, one there, and a big one up there. Look at this view. There's loads of cans up here. There's another two there. Well, still not quite at Black Hill. Oh my god, so windy up here. Um, I'm almost there. It's no snacks till Black Hill. <laughs> so, look at this amazing view though. Just got everything. Right, let's keep going. Much flatter at the top where we're on the top of the top of the hill now. There are cans everywhere. Oh. I feel a bit better now, I can't see any more hills in sight. <laughs> Oh, up here though. Don't you 
you see what I can see. So this is our flat route for a bit as we aim for Black Hill. I mean this might all be Black Hill. It's the top of a hill. <laughs> Put a stone on a on a cairn. Let's do that this time. Let's add. There we go. That's our addition to a cairn. We also had a quick look at the mileage and I've only done a mile and a half so far. Feels like a lot longer. Still grouse territory up here. Lots of bilby bushes. I would imagine this is one of the things that they like up here. Look at this. Amazing view. Look at that rolling hill coming down there. And there's a mast up here. It probably means my 4G signal is quite good. Actually, I haven't had, had any problem with signals out on my walks. My Google Maps has been very accurate. It means I never get lost. Swallows. That sun coming out is a really welcome bit of warmth. Imagine the wind is pretty relentless up here. Ooh. What's that stone? Has it got anything on it? It's intriguing looking. think that has anything on it. What is that? I wonder if that's... that must be something. Looks like a gravestone, doesn't it? look that up later. If I find anything I shall add notes here. Little pipits everywhere. A 
This is really nice up on the top here, despite the wind. There's a lot of birds up here. terrain changes remarkably up here, it's now really boggy and there's a pine or a larch changes very fast up here just on this top, this top bit there's your grouse feels really warm. But as soon as you're walking into the wind it feels cold again. Ah, there's a trig point. <laughs> that will be the Black Hill trig point. I didn't know it had one of those. That's really good. Oh, very nice. Ah, now I feel triumphant. I'd love to know where all these stones came from that they've used to flagstone the walk because a lot of them have marks in them like they've come from something else see so look at this this looks like it's had tiles stuck to it at some point or oh. Lots of them have the remnants of almost like railings in them or like markings on them like X's or initials. So I don't know if they've been robbed out from old buildings or, or what. I'm being watched by a hundred beady eyes <laughs> from red grouse. They're all around me still. I'm really pleased to have seen so many of them though. Because that's another bird off my checklist. I mean, this feels like a place to have a snack, a celebratory snack. Even though it's very exposed. There's a human. There's a human walking towards me. Grief. 
I'm not the only one up here. And here is Black Hill Trig Point. This is a very smart trig point. Look at that base. There we are. and go. He's coming down here. So I stopped to talk to that walker. He's walking the whole Pennine Way. He started two days ago at Edale and I forget actually that I'm walking south now. I'm so used to starting south and walking north. I forgot I'm walking towards the south. So he started at Edale two days ago and he's a camper. So he stopped at the Crowden camping site and he's aiming to be at Hebden Bridge by the end of today. And he says he's planning to do the whole thing in 13 days. And he said the last time he did this was when he was 15 with his brother. And I would imagine he's probably in his 60s, this chap. He may be in his 50s, it's really hard to tell. And uh, he said it was so much harder to do then because they hadn't laid any of the lovely flagstones that we can now walk on. So you really were just walking across the hills. And if you look here, then you can see that. This is just bog. It is probably quite deep actually. And because it's peaty, it probably sinks as well. It's very wet up here. Do you expect to be so wet on the top of a hill? But it is. Um, so yeah, so he's planning to do it in 13 days. Now, everyone else that I've seen doing the Pennine Way in one stretch, I think has done it in about 19 days. Although, I don't know how much, you know, speed they were putting on. If he's trying to break a world record or something, he'll be really striding out. Um, so wow, I've met my first person who's walking the whole Pennine Way. I'd love to do it. I think I would struggle to do it in one hit because I'm still at that point where I need rest time and my feet don't particularly like walking for a very long stretches. When I get to about eight miles, my feet really start to hurt and I know that hiker's foot is definitely a thing and I don't think anyone has a perfect a perfect hike, hike in that respect but um, yeah I'd love to do that one day I'm not a camper this is the thing so it would be a case of either having to go point to point and finding places to stay or I have to learn how to camp and I don't want to do that on my own I would not feel safe camping in a tent on my own. I don't mind walking like this and I'm happy car camping because I can lock my doors but the idea of sleeping exposed in a tent on my own on a hillside somewhere does cheer me up. I struggle to sleep anywhere properly outside my own bed as it is so I think I'd be a zombie by the end. Uh, so, that's the first point of call done, that was Black Hill Trick Point and really my end game, I think it's called 
Ladau Rocks or Luddock Rocks but it's quite a way my god it's windy thank god for my bit of sponge on the side of my phone you can probably hear the wind because when it's really bad you will hear it through this but it you can hear me you know I wouldn't even be able to put this on YouTube if I didn't have this because it would be appalling um, but it is proper sideways winds here um, right let's turn you around again so I'm just going to keep following the route I do now want to stop and eat something but I don't want to sit in this wind it's a bit relentless so I'm just going to try and find somewhere that's a bit more protected exposed peat this is what they're trying to stop up here we need to protect it as much as possible because once it's gone it's gone okay we're coming down a little bit now so hopefully that wind will ease off a little bit Another can doing a balancing act. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Try to put my hoodie back up because that wind is relentless and quite annoying. to find strings on my hoodie so I've pulled myself a bit tight yeah that wind is just really annoying batters the side of your head and your ears I could do with that sun coming out a little bit because that wind is cold I feel like I am definitely not going to get to my second hike point at this rate I'm not feeling this and it's a little bit chilly and I'm remembering the outbound journey so far it's going to be just as hard getting back I've probably done about two miles so far if I can get another mile then that'll give me a round trip of about six which won't be too bad want to stop for a moment but there's nowhere to stop here really And I stretch down here, it's a little bit more protected. I 
just wet here. I've lost the path completely. Just go around the side. That does not look fun. Is there a way round? Am I going to end up getting into serious trouble? There's a bit of path here. I suspect. Hmm. There's a bit of path here. I wonder if people are used to walking around this. I think they are. <laughs> I think this is a standard walking around the bog route. Oh my goodness. This is pretty boggy. There's the path there. Wow. You need welly boots here. People have walked around here, so I'm just going to follow them. Gosh. <laughs> that was different. All that way round just to get around that little bit. I mean. two bits because you could walk through that bit. I think the flooded bit is further down. The way I've gone up and over my boots there. It's very boggy. easier. There be any sign of sheep up here. I suspect they don't like all the water. It's very wet here.
this is a great expanse. Still feels very different to how it does on the northern stretches. And I <laughs> keep forgetting that I'm walking south. The wetter south by the looks of it. There's another walker coming towards me. down for a minute and watch this chap goes. My second chatty hiker. A really nice chap. There's a nice people up on these hills. He said that if I go down here, keep going, there's a stile and after that it gets pretty wet. Um, part of me is looking for excuses to turn around and go back. <laughs> I'll see. Maybe the style is the place to stop and eat. I definitely need to eat something now. It's just preoccupying my mind too much. The weather feels a lot more oppressive down here. It's a lot darker. We shouldn't have rain today. I'm not really worried about that, but it's um, <laughs> trying to keep my hoodie up, but the wind keeps trying to blow it off. Yeah, it's quite nice here, but I think I like the the moorlands further north a bit more. I don't know why you like what you like, don't you, really? I mean, it's what it is. Very grassy down here, though. Feels a lot more like walking through fields. pretty rock free zone here. There's nowhere to sit down and the ground's really wet.
the style. I could sit on the style, couldn't I? It's practically a bench, isn't it? Walking up there. I'm going to stop here on this style, have some water and something to eat. Yeah, that sounds like a good move. Just finished snacking as I walked. There was a couple hiking down towards me. So I kind of packed up because they were wanting to get across. So I had half a ham and coleslaw baguette and a vegetable samosa. And now we're walking again. I've now done over three miles, which accrued unexpectedly fast. And I'm actually not that far from Lado Rocks. So depending on how the rest of this goes, Oh gosh, that chap was right, it is quite wet along here. Blimey. What I'm worried about is going too deep, because it can be deceiving when you're looking at grasses in the water. You don't want to step in and suddenly find you've gone up to your knee in it. Um, I'm so pleased I have waterproof boots now. This makes such a difference. I'd have been soaked before. But it's also going to get worse. Gosh. Ooh, it's slippery as well. Um, someone has, people have made little side routes, so we'll, oops, we'll use those. I think the animals have probably used them. Blimey. It's quite wet along here. That was deep brook or a clough here. Oh my god, it's so... This is not too bad because it's slabs but they're underwater so at least you know you won't sink. It just depends on how deep they are. This is quite a wet section though. And there's, uh... I need to turn you around, don't I? Yeah, so it was all wet along that path there. And there's the, the clough here. She's looking quite healthy. We've had a lot of rain though. Let's. I don't think this is deep, but it's quite slippery. Nope, it's a damselfly. This isn't too bad, actually. Okay, it's not too bad. Oops. Muddy.
He's going to need a good claim when I get back, that's for sure. But we're still dry. If it's not too hilly, they're getting up to Ladder Rocks might not be too bad. That was going to be my final destination. I wasn't going to go any further because I think it's about four and a half miles end to end. And then of course I've still got to get back and I've still got all those difficult wet bits to do and the cloughs and it's quite hilly towards the other end. So I need to bear that in mind on the walk back. It's not straightforward. wasn't too wet that actually. <coughs> oh dear, bless me. That's very pretty. I see another walker. They're everywhere today. This is a popular stretch. I wonder if they're all turning around and coming back the other way or whether they're, they have other ways of getting home. Oh look, there's another one of those caterpillars. again. Oh shoot, very slippery. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm going to stop for a minute and concentrate. Like we're out of slabs. In many ways I prefer walking on those. You can't go wrong on your route then, which is nice. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. I don't fancy walking over there. I'm going to go the other way. It's still wet, but perhaps slightly less wet. Yeah, it's definitely less wet. Well, maybe. Heavens. I'd say that this walk is probably more for more seasoned hikers. There's a lot of very wet terrain here at the moment. Although, whether it's always like this, I don't know. I imagine in the hot weather, it probably isn't. You nearly lost my place there completely.
That is very pretty. It's a lot warmer down here. It's still windy, but it's much closer. Just gonna walk a bit further and then see how far I am from my final destination. There's a lot of damselflies here, which is no surprise given the water. Do I have to walk across this? Really? <sighs> I might go that way. I have terrible balance. And... <laughs> oh, these rocks are really slippery. Very slimy rocks. Oh shoot. <laughs> Don't do that after you've had a couple of drinks. Hmm. looks pretty gross. That does not look nice, does it? The colour's a bit weird. Looks like the last bit I need to get across. I think this bit will be better. I'm going to get wet somewhere along the line, aren't I? I just don't want to fall. soggy. Let's try this bit. Looks slightly better here. Yeah, let's go that way. It's 
much warmer down here. I'm going to have to lose a layer at this rate. The air is really close. water. <laughs> I'll go around this one there. More hikers in the distance. I'm not sure how I feel about this route. There he is. A red grouse. He's watching me. Yeah, do I want to carry on? A spot here I might have stopped to have some water.
had to remove layers because it's a lot warmer at this end. There are hikers everywhere here. So another pair have just gone past me and there's another two coming in the distance. And there's another one behind them. I don't feel like going any further. I think it's going to be too busy. I think they probably still have another mile to go. And I've done just short of four miles. It's turned really warm. I just don't feel in the mood for it. And the other thing is that now I've got lots of hikers who are now in front of me going back. Unless they're taking other routes, I'm going to be like behind people all the time. And it's really wet as well. Crossing this brook about a hundred times isn't as much fun. I think that chat's walking the dog. Uh, I'm going to let this couple go and then I'm going to start walking back. Yeah, I feel like I've done quite a lot. It'll be enough. It's probably about 11 o'clock now. I don't feel an urge to get all the way to Lado Rocks. Yeah, I'm going to head home. Um, I'm not going to record the return journey because you've seen, you've already seen it. Um, and I will catch you back at the car unless something really interesting comes along because you never know. Catch you later. got back to the car. I have the windswept look. <laughs> the wind does wonderful things to your hair. I ended up doing 7.63 miles, 18 and a half thousand steps and according to my pedometer that took uh, just under three and a half hours but I did a lot of stopping so even not getting to my final point which I thought might be a little bit of a push I think I did pretty well so I've <laughs> I slipped in a brook on the way back and got absolutely soaked um, thankfully I didn't fall in but I slipped in on my feet so I came home with one very wet foot <laughs> Uh, never mind, such is life. So I'm going to eat the other half of my baguette. I have a snack that I left in the car, which is a plum, which will be nice because I haven't had any sugar. And then I'm going to head home. It is now half past one. Um, that ended up being quite a good hike. That was hard work. Coming back across that clough, that crazy river crossing, was worse than going out it was so steep I don't know how I managed it um, I didn't like it as much as some of my other hikes um, I think I'm just more in tune with being on the moors the very flat moors here feels very different it was good to see the red grouse that was good um, Coming back was a lot busier, a lot of hikers. There are now a lot of cars here, a lot of walkers, whereas I was the first person here this morning. And the only people I saw when I was out walking out were people coming from the other direction, up this way. Um, so it pays to get out here early. But the walk back felt really, really different because when I arrived here, you couldn't see the tops of the, the hills because it was so misty 
because it was early and it was much colder. Coming back, it's sun and blue sky now, so it was a really warm walk back as well. And pleased I stopped when I did. I wouldn't have wanted to do any more, I don't think. Um, and as it was, as I just after I turned around and started to walk back, I heard my camera phone switch off. The battery had run out. And it got down to 16% and it had cut out. So I'm just letting it charge up a little bit before I head off. Um, no, I'm pleased I did that. I'm pleased I didn't bottle out of that. I probably would have added an extra mile to my walk if I'd carried on and got to um, got to those that second set of rocks. But I didn't feel I had to do it. Good day though, pleased I did that.